<coughs> excuse me welcome to south asia this is intellectual chatriya channel bringing south asian history culture and heritage to you in the form of icons and maps south asia maps is a iconographic channel for the audience and today the topic of discussion is the treaty of amritsar 1846 march that is the treaty between the dogras and british is a very fascinating treaty we will be discussing and exploring today before that if you are following me at other social medias please go to our main youtube channel type south asia maps j ready and you will have plethora of broad based topics covered by me in the form of beautiful pictures images and icons and you will enjoy listening and learning about our motherland bharat from where i have nearly 10 or so playlists the punjab and tamil nadu the maratha empire the treaties and battles the vijayanagara empire the railway history the districts in india nizams of hyderabad and many so <coughs> excuse me for my allergies with that brief introduction about our channel as usual today the same slide i am showing here the very interesting very important event that happened in that part of india near the <coughs> great punjab plains the treaty of amritsar it was signed by very prominent figures political military leaders that mattered at the time in the march of 1846 on 16th the treaty between the dogras dogras are a group of linguistic group rajputs essentially in the jammu kathua regions north of punjab plains these are the punjab plains and south of pir panjal mountains dogras and the british british east india company bahadur <coughs> after this he will have very solid understanding of maharaja the gulab singh dogra the founder of modern jammu and kashmir the governor general lord hardinge at the time or henry hardinge he is important to uh, the colleagues advisors are the british east india company the leaders henry montgomery lawrence and frederick curry frederick curry was the <coughs> the secretary to the government of india at calcutta british government of india <coughs> before that here i have shown this so that we'll go over it very briefly this is the princely state of jammu and kashmir and the block area mostly punjab plains we have jammu here we have kash kathua here jammu and kashmir the district of jammu district of kathua kathua district of udampur district of rajouri or riyasi this is the zhelum river and we have mirpur district punch district muzaffarabad district south kashmir there is anantanag and ganderbal <coughs> pulwama those regions north kashmir the shrinagar baramulla kupwara uri those areas and kargil region here and baltistan region here ladakh region here the indus river will be somewhere here skis around the astor and there is a nanga parbat here the mighty nanga parbat this is the sindhu river or indus river kilas region and yasin region hunja region 
Gilgit region. These are all the districts or the regions in Dogra kingdom, Jammu and Kashmir kingdom. The kingdom founded by Maharaja Gulab Singh Dogra of Jammu or Jammuwalia. Across here we will see how Afghania, that is Wakhan Corridor, corridor called separating Maharaja's territories to the south and Tajikistan to the north and Xinjiang province of China at the time the Qing Empire or King Empire and of course the Afghanistan and Mazari Sarif north of Hindukush mountains and Karakoram mountains here when we say Karakoram to, Karakoram to Kanyakumari means Karakoram mountains were in the dominions, realms, realms of Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir, Gulab Singh and at the time of partition his descendant Maharaja Hari Singh and <coughs> Hazara district and south of it we will see the Rawalpindi district here, Zilam district here, Attak district where the Indus river falls into the plains and we have the Shapur district, Jang district, Gujranwala district, the birthplace of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, Gujarat district, south of Zilam district, and of course the Sialkot district bordering the Jammu Katwa region. Here we have Gurdaspur district, here we have Pathan Court, and here of course Amritsar, and uh, this is the rear river Ravi, across it we have Lahore Historic Lahore City, Amritsar District, Gurdaspur District, Princely State of Chamba, and Kangra District of British Punjab. The Kangra District that is the Nurpur, Kangra, and Kulu, <coughs> Palanpur, Jogindar Nagar, and Kulu, and Bajor, and Manali, Rohatang Pass, across the Trans Himalayas. We have like a Lahul and Spiti and those. This is also Kangra district at that time. And this is the Mandi district. Mandi and Suket district. Satlajra will be somewhere here. Simla will be somewhere here. So you have now a broader perspective of that region. We are going to talk about. After the presentation, you will get a very solid understanding of the fascinating events that excuse me, occurred on that part of Bharat and you can very easily follow and you will have a deeper understanding and you can articulate those things with your friends or colleagues or co-workers or anybody because now you have a broader and deeper understanding of the events that are happening in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh and all those things. <coughs> Here is the picture of uh, Gulab Singh Dogra, Gulab Singh Dogra Maharaja, and he passed away around about 1857. That means uh, one month or so after the Sepoy mutiny broke in the upper Dob, across river Yamuna, in Doba region of United Provinces or Uttar Pradesh. That means he passed away around about uh, uh, June or so, 1857. Lord Harding was the Governor General appointed by East India Company in London, in Britain, and he held the office 1844 to 48, during whose rim, under his leadership, under his time, that this treaty was signed. Henry Montgomery Lawrence. There are three Lawrence brothers. I will discuss some other time. George Lawrence was the elder one. The second was Montgomery Lawrence. And the youngest one was John Lawrence. John Lawrence was seven or eight years younger than him. John Lawrence is very important. These people played a very important role in the British Punjab history. And John Lawrence, the youngest of the three Lawrence brothers, also became the governor general and viceroy that means the crown's representative after canning uh, that means after the sipai mutiny uh, canning uh, demitted office around about 1866 or so and there was a two years inter interim by some other governor generals and his younger brother john lawrence succeeded that means very very important personalities associated in shaping the history 
<coughs> John Lawrence was also involved in this, not directly as much as his younger brother, Montgomery Lawrence or Henry Lawrence. Frederick Curry was a principal advisor and secretary to the government of India, that is British government of India at Fort William, that is on the east side of River, River Hooghly or Bhagiradi in the Bengal Delta, the Indo-Gangetic Plains. These are the prominent people. <coughs> and today, so we'll briefly discuss about the, uh, the Islamic imperialism before the context to how we come to 1846 March, why the treaty was signed, what are the events that uh, denouement happened, for this signing of the treaty. Islamic imperialism, birth of Islam in Mecca, Medina, essentially a militant conversion based ideology, the Arab invasion of Sindh, then the Ghaznavid and Ghurid rule and establishment of Mughal Empire, then the collapse of Mughal Empire by the rising the Maratha nationalism or Hindu nationalism and Duranis took over in the western part of Afghania. Duranis and Marathas contested at Panipat 3 battle, that is 1761 January, second week, and Marathas was decisively defeated. And the remaining political vacuum that was built in Punjab plains was filled by the Sikh small kingdoms called missiles, and among which Guzrenwala missile, that is the Guzrenwala district, is across River Ravi and river Jilam and that is the birthplace of Sukar Chak, a missile was headed by Maharaja Ranji Singh, father Mahan Singh. Ranji Singh was born in around about 1780 and he lived most of his life in Lahore after he became Maharaja and passed away when he was nearly 60 in 1839, built the kingdom step by step. We earlier discussed about the Treaty of Amritsar, that is Amritsar 1, 19, sorry, the 1809, where the Sutlej River become the boundary between Khalsa Darbar in the north and East India Company territories in the south. Now we are talking about the second treaty. Treaty of Amritsar in 1846. The first treaty is 1809. Second treaty is 1846. I have posted that first treaty and you can look in the Punjab history or Punjab region and you can find it. Today our topic of presentation is the second treaty, Treaty of Amritsar. So, <coughs> We were here, uh, then after the death of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the Sikh kingdom at Lahore or Khalsa kingdom or Khalsa Sarkar descended into anarchy. And uh, large the killing of Dhyan Singh and Sher Singh Maharaja, Sher Singh Maharaja's son Pratap Singh and next was his uh, next was his essentially it is an anarchy. And British agent general Herbert Edwards was reporting to the Governor General Lord Hardinge at Fort William in Calcutta about the events. After the death of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, British started strengthening their frontier across Sutlej. There were three major cantonment towns at that time. Ambala or Umbala at that time, that is across River Yamuna near Jagadri and then Ludhiana south of Sutlej River and Firozpur south of Sutlej River. All this containment, British start increasing, moving the troops and uh, putting the more guns and more artillery and all those things. And British occupied Sindh also 1843, four years after the death of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, 1839. And the courtiers were very afraid of the Khalsa army because the Khalsa army became unruly. That means they were not taking the orders from the rulers, the Vajis. Essentially the ruler, now Dalip Singh, was nearly four or five years old because when Maharaja Ranjit Singh died, 1839 June, uh, his youngest son Dalip Singh 
was around about 10 months. We are talking about 1843 means around about 4 years or so. So there was no virtually ruler in Punjab at that time. What happened was the courtiers, the Khalsa, the Sardar, the leaders, in a sense ministers, encouraged the Khalsa army to cross the Sutlej river. They had the two objectives. In case the army wins the war against the British or stalemates the war and they will get the credit because they were one of the people behind it. In case the army loses the war, army will be subdued. That means they will be defeated, they will be more amenable. So the Sikh army crossed Sutlej river. That is the Kasas belly, means the region for getting into the war. The British were looking for it. Sikhs provided the regions because the Sutlej river was sacrosanct. Lakshman Rekha, which cannot be defiled, which cannot be crossed. That was the treaty, right? 1809. The treaty between Maharaja Ranjit Singh and uh, Governor General at that time, Lord Minto, his representative, Charles Metcalf. That is the boundary they will respect and Maharaja Ranjit Singh respected it. British also respected it nearly for 30 years. Now Brit Sikh calls army violated the treaty and war broke down. There are six or seven battles found, fought near Firozpur and uh, uh, <coughs> those areas, Aliwal, Budwal and Firozsha and all those things, finally Sobran and because that is not the topic of discussion today and the victorious British army moved into Lahore city. Lord Hardinge, that is the governor general, himself entered into the Lord, Lahore city and Treaty of Lahore was signed. When was it signed? Exactly a one week before the Treaty of Amrusa. That is the first Treaty of Lahore. Second Treaty of Lahore we will discuss later. That is the Annexation Treaty. First Treaty of Lahore, six, seven days before. This means 9th March 1846. Essentially, six gave entire Doba region. Doba region means uh, Jalandhar district and Hoshiarpur district, Hoshiarpur, Dausa and <coughs> Yuna, Hoshiarpur, Navansha, Jalandhar, Fillaur, Nakodar, all those regions north of Ludhiana district were given to British. The Doba, Bishtu Do became the British East India Company territory. At that time the treaty has many classes. The class 12 has British imposed indemnity. Indemnity means Khal's army violated the boundary. They have to pay the penalty because British incurred lot of manpower loss as well as the monetary loss. Even Governor General came from Calcutta, travelled all the way to Punjab place near Sutlej means you can imagine that is not a small war contested it is a major, major war that is the British East India Company government Sarkar at Calcutta involved. So, Sikh Khalsa Darbar, Lahore Darbar has to pay 150 lakhs. And <coughs> they scratched their entire Khajana and could able to muster 75 lakhs. Still, there was 75 lakhs. Nanakshahi rupees to the East India Company Bahadur as a part of indemnity. So what Sikh leaders said at that time was they said they will give the territories, <coughs> hilly areas which they nominally control. That was the, here the trick lies because that hilly area, Jammu and all those regions were ruled by Raja Gulab Singh Dogra, Jamuwalia who was a tributary of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. His brothers were the prominent courtiers, ministers in a sense. Dhyan Singh, Dhyan Singh, his elder, younger brother, second brother <coughs> and third brother and his nephew all were become the 
prime ministers, Diwans, even Dhyan Singh itself is a Diwan for 30 years. That means Ranjit Singh died in 39, means Dhyan Singh, brother of Gulab Singh, was 30 years Diwan. He was killed, so he finally retired. He was not comfortable with the the <coughs> Khalsa Sikh leaders in Lahore Darbar and they were his adversaries and he kept quiet in the Sikh war. He is a very capable leader. He quite kept, that made him essentially, yeah, because he kept quiet, didn't involve himself in the hostilities and he is pursued as a friend of East India Company. And he finally, after the war, Sabron war, battle was fought, six defeated, he came into arena, political, and made a treaty. That means Gulab Singh lent his <coughs> talent or his political talents and his negotiation skills by stitching a treaty, establishing the amity between the two belligerents. East India Company Bahadur and Lahore Darbar. So, this will fit into the entire thing. We will come into it later. That means, six essentially owed 75 lakh rupees. And they said they will give all the hilly regions. That means where Gulab Singh was ruling and they can get rid of him. Or that was also one region. And <coughs> that means essentially all the hilly regions, that means these are the Pirpanjals and Himalayas and Ladakh, these are the hilly regions, these are the Punjab plains. The hilly regions between river Ravi, Ravi river here, Ravi means essentially you can remember Patankot. Here the Chamba, Ravi river comes from the Brahmau region, from the Chamba, that means <coughs> in the south it is rimmed by the <coughs> Pirpanjal, <coughs> Dawladar mountains and Pirpanjal in the north, Pirpanjal, the Ravi river. You have Patan Kot here, Gurdaspur, Batala and all those regions and uh, Khatwa here. Between Ravi and Indus, the hilly regions, the Siwalik regions above the Punjab plains were given to the, to the East India Company. East India Company lacked the manpower, that means the people to administer, knowledgeable people, that is the hilly area. So they were looking to trade the territory, Gulab Singh came into the picture. He said he will pay those 75 dollars, 75 lakh Nanakshahi rupees to the East India Company provided they give the territories to him. <coughs> that class before one week, British has all these things in mind, has in class 12 of Lahore Treaty, that is the one week before, British has the right to trade these territories to anybody they like. That means after the treaty was settled, now the new treaty between Gulab Singh Raja, at that time his designation was Raja, Raja Gulab Singh of Jammu, Jammu Walia, who lived in the Jammu region in the Siwalik area south of Pirpanja, north of Ravi River, that is Jammu. The treaty was signed between the East India Company and Maharaja Gulab Singh. Sikh Khalsa Sarkar was not at all involved. That is a very, very salient feature. If the East India Company wanted, at the time of signing the first Lahore Treaty, that is one week before that, they should have involved Raja Gulab Singh also in that. Raja Gulab Singh didn't sign the first treaty. Seven or eight Sardars of Dalip Singh, who was a young Maharaja, signed the treaty. And first treaty, that is the Lahore Treaty, was signed by Dalip Singh. He is eight Sardars in Lahore Darbar. And Hard, Henry Hardinge, the Governor General here, and also Frederick Curry, the secretary to the British East India Company government at Fort Williams, Calcutta, and Henry Montgomery Lawrence, the Middle Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence, this was trained. Gulab Singh was involved. And after one week, Gulab Singh came into prominence. Governor General Frederick Curry Lawrence, the same three people who signed 
Treaty of Lahore, that is the first treaty, signed the treaty with Gulab Singh. Now he is designated as Maharaja Gulab Singh. That means all the hilly regions that were given to the British East India Company as an indemnity by the Khalsa Sarkar were awarded given to Raja Gulab Singh of Jammu. So these are the districts we discussed. Of course later Gulab Singh and his descendant Ranbir Singh and then Pratap Singh and Hari Singh the last Maharaja conquered a lot of these territories like Gilgit, Yasin, Chilas, Astor, Baltistan, Ladakh. That's a different story. Essentially he, these territories were given. The important central piece is the Kashmir Valley that is densely populated, very fertile and also known for its scenic beauty, majestic, not in India but throughout the world. It is like a paradise on the planet Earth itself. One side Pir Panjal, other side uh, you have the Himalayan mountains, the valley itself is round about 1500 meters about sea level, that means Srinagar is round about 1500 meters or so. You compare Mahabaleshwar in <coughs> Satara district and the Sahyadri that is 1442 meters sea level, whereas Srinagar itself is more than 1500 meters sea level. So the that is not important. The important is the scenic beauty. So these territories between River Ravi and Indus was given to Raja Gulab Singh. Raja now designated as a Maharaja. Now there are two Maharajas in that region. Maharaja Gulab Singh of Jammu and Kashmir. Maharaja Dalip Singh of Khalsa Sarkar at Lahore. And these are the territories. Of course, when the territories were given, there was a Sikh governor, that's a Muslim governor actually, under Sikh control. He resisted the occupation of uh, Kashmir, but uh, <coughs> British held him, sent uh, Herbert Edwards, because the powerful personality at the time of the British India Empire, Hardinge and Frederick Curry and Mantegomery were the people behind the treaty. So it is their responsibility to make it the territories were given to the legati. Legati means the legal hair. The legal hair is now Gulab Singh. Legal heads were Maharaja Ranjit Singh and his descendants after the, they lost the war they traded the territories. East India Company was the legati, the legal head. And East India Company gave it to Gulab Singh. Gulab Singh is now a legati. He legally holds them. So finally Gulab Singh was able to establish in the Kashmir Valley and Valley of Kashmir. These are the, originally the treaty was hilly areas. When you hear about the first, second treaty of Amritsar, two things are important. Ravi River and Indus River. All the hilly territories between these two rivers were given to East India Company. So those are like Jammu and Kashmir, Mirpur, Punch, Muzaffarabad, North Kashmir, South Kashmir, Udhampur, of course Kargil, Ladakh. These were already under the control of Raja of Jammu, Gulab Singh and Hazara. Later British modified that because Hazara district here, that is Atok district here, Rawalpindi district here, north of that is a Hazara district, that is the Haripur, Manshera, Abbottabad, Balakot, all those regions are called at the time Hazara district, Hist historic Hazara district, right? And a later treaty was modified to mood that boundaries were moved to Zila. That is the very important you have to remember. That means Hazara district was retained in the Maharaja's territory itself. That is the Sikh Khalsa's territory, Hazara district. So river Zilam and Ravi become the boundaries. All the hilly areas, finally the classes were between the Ravi river and Zilam river were given to Gulab Singh Raja of Jammu and designated as <coughs> Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir. Now you see the lot of uh, secularists in India are uh, people hostile to the Hindus. They will be telling especially the Chemcha Sheikh Abdullah. Sheikh Abdullah was nothing but 
ये कैश्मीरी सेसेसनिस्ट प्रॉपर्ड अप बाय नेक्रो फॉर वेरियस रीजंस एंड ही वाज अलवेज सब स्टोरीज 75 लाख वे हैव बीन सोल्ड ही अलवेज सेस इट दिस इज सिली एट दैट टाइम Trading the territory for money was very common. Entire Alaska was sold, even one square kilometer of Alaska was sold for cents by the Russian government, Romanov dynasty, to the uh, the American government. And like that, it happened everywhere. Like, but the trade treaty was traded. That's all. There is nothing wrong about it. That is used as an excuse to. Inside the Muslim mobs in the Kashmir Valley against the Hindus, essentially a cover-up. So, whenever anybody talks about that, you have to keep in mind this is a very common thing. British traded the main territory, Peshwa traded the territories for money. This has happened, still happening in many parts of the world. That is nothing wrong about it. That was normal at that time. <coughs> so, that is in brief. What is the legacy of this important treaty? That's very important. How does it affect today's politics? It affects immensely the today's Indian polity. I will briefly go over it here. <coughs> When partition occurred, the, according to the partition June third plan, where the covered as Congress le leadership signed it. With Jinnah, that is called June Third Plan, nineteen forty-seven, or Mountbatten's Plan. Muslim majority districts, as per nineteen forty-one census, will be awarded to the Brit uh, Muslim League. That means the formation of Pakistan. If they will become Pakistani territories, if Jammu and Kashmir was not. Rested by Gulab Singh during Amritsar Treaty, suppose it was a part of a Sikh Sarkar, and later when the British annex the Punjab, it will automatically become part of Punjab. Or even they may designate it any other name later, even bifurcate it, a Kashmir, but is a British province. This. Muslim majority regions going will apply to that. That automatically, that entire Jammu and Kashmir will be going to the Pakistan. That's very very important. That's why you have to appreciate the the knowledge and vision of Gulab Singh. If you look from hindsight, side, when the Sikh Sarkar collapsed and he realized there is no way to save the Khalsa Sarkar, there is no capable leader there anymore. After the death of Ranjit Singh, Maharaja, and whatever he could salvage, he could salvage. And form a very big kingdom. When everybody was losing at that time, the Peshwas ru lost their territory. The Gaikwad lost the territory. Sindhias lost the territory. Bonsles lost the territory. Holkars. It is the intelligence and sagacity of Maharaja Gulab Singh. We have to appreciate and admire today. He built the Jammu and Kashmir princely state. That is one of the Thing you have to keep in mind, Radcliffe line should have applied. Radcliffe line I talked about extensively. That is the partition line, essentially along River Ravi for some time. That means the Patan Court, Gurdaspur, Amritsar areas. That means the Radcliffe line was not applied, and during the partition agreement, princely states have the right to. Whether join India or Pakistan, based upon the discretion of the ruler, if they are in the border area, like Jammu and Kashmir was in the border, Bahawalpur was in the border area, and Jodhpur and all those areas, that means because it was a Hindu monarch, Gulab Singh, his successor Maharaja Hari Singh. He opted for India. That's why Jammu and Kashmir is today in. Our country or Indian territory. That is very important. Accession of the Kashmir, and military. Suppose if Kashmir was gone to Pakistan, means the Pakistan military army junta will be targeting Indian territories from the mountainous and strategically important areas where they will be in the mountains 
our army will be in the plains and will be very vulnerable. They will be across Patan court praying on us every day. That is also one of the legacy we have to keep in mind. The great service Maharaja Gulab Singh rendered to the Hindu society. That means the sword of Islam, the Saiful Islam will be across the Patan court. Of course, Nehru later lost some of the territory. That is a different story. That cannot be blamed on Gulab Singh or his successor, Maharaja Hari Singh. The loss of the territory, even though Indians won, the Javans won the battle, was due to the cowardice or lack of poor quality leadership of Jawaharlal Nehru. That should not be confused with what the resting of this area by Maharaja Gulab Singh. The further Islamic gangsterism and Jammu Hindus should have been just thrown into the Islamic wolves, the gangsters, the Muslims, the followers of Islam. That is a very militant, aggressive, militant ideology, conversion based ideology dressed up as a religion, essentially a uh, imperialistic ideology. So Hindus should have lost much of the territory and uh, so lack of understanding of Islam, all those things uh, were not that important. The value of the land, trading of the land for uh, appeasement, uh, appeasing the Muslims by the Gandhi and uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, all those people didn't solve the real issue of the Islam in India, even though Hindus surrendered five subhas, Purbi Bengal, East Bengal, and Paschim Punjab, and Sindh, and Beluch province, and Sarihad Subha, that is Pakhtunkhwa, or, and Northwest Frontier province in 1947 <coughs> uh, during the, and these things were discussed uh, in uh, Cl clarity much by the voice of India think tank, one of the greatest thinkers of modern India. You can go and uh, read the works. I have put the link in my the description. Uh, Karma Yogi Sitaram Goelji, the intellectual chatri of modern times, and Mahayogi Sri Ram Sarubji and Dr. Coenrad Elst from Belgium. They are voice of India think tank. They played a very prominent role in awakening the Hindu society today. Our generally called as a Trimurti of Hindu awakening or Hindu renaissance that is the related to this part. So essentially what did we discuss today? Today we discussed very fascinating events that occurred in that part of Bharat, the northwest part of Bharat in Punjab plains in the Siva lakes, above the Pir Panjals, in the <coughs> Trans Himalayan region of northwestern India. The Treaty of Amritsar, Islamic imperialism, and Ghaznavis Ghoris, and Mamluk Sultans, Leo Sultans, the Mughals, Afghans, Duranis, the Marathas, Battle of Panipat, replacement of the Khalsa, Sarkar, Islamic imperialism, finally by the British imperialism, death of Maharaja Ranjit Singh in 1839 summer, and outbreak of Anglo Sikh war. There are two wars fought 45 46 is the first war and 48-49 during the December time, the second war. After the first war, Treaty of Lahore, the government of Khalsa Darbar shed the Jalandhar Dob region and gave the hilly regions to British East India Company Bahadur because they owed a lot of money in the indemnity treaty of Lahore, British forced on them and that remaining 75 lakhs were Footed by Maharaj Raja Gulab Singh Dogra of Jammu, prominent courtier of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, and he was awarded all the territories north of Ravi River and east of Indus River, later east of Jhelum River, that is Kathwa district today, Jammu district, Rajauri district, that is Riyasi district, Udampur district across Jilam, Mirpur district and Punch district 
and Muzaffarabad district in the valley North Kashmir and South Kashmir and Kargil and Ladakh, Baltistan were already under the control of uh, Raja Gulab Singh because he is general. Uh, Jorawar Singh, a very great general, conquered all those territories. In fact, he died uh, at the time in conquering those territories. And Hazara district, which was across Jhelum, this is River Jhelum, this is the Anantanag and uh, uh, Srinagar and Baramulla and goes to Baramulla Yuri and Muzaffarabad and goes straight and Mirpur and this is the Potwar region descends into the Punjab plain. So we have Rawalpindi district, Atok district, Jhelum district, Gujarat district, Guzranwala district here and <coughs> also discussed about this uh, Nanga Parbat here and uh, later the Dogra rulers conquered Chilas and Yasin and Gilgit and all those regions. Here the Afghanistan's Wakhan corridor and that separates the Maharaja's territories from Chinese territory of Xinjiang or Qing Empire or King Empire at that time before the communists took over China. And all these regions we covered and the Treaty of Amritsar during the signature, none of the courtiers of Lahore Darbar were the part. That is the uniqueness. That was the treaty signed by Raja Gulab Singh and <coughs> later ratified by Henry Harding and his representatives, the government, uh, British government, uh, Foreign Secretary Frederick Curry and uh, advisor to prominent negotiator of this treaty. Henry Montgomery Lawrence signed on behalf of Lord Harding or Henry Harding and Raja Gulab Singh and the Lip Singh or his representatives were not at all involved in negotiating or signing this treaty. The treaty is very unique because of Gulab Singh wrested the collapsing territories and Sikh empire and salvaged lot of uh, these hilly and mountainous regions. Later his descendant Hari Singh acceded to India. If he didn't rest these territories, they should have become part of British territory rather than the princely state. And we talked about the legacy, the Radcliffe lines and Kashmir and the Saiful Islam and uh, all those things in general. That is in brief about the very important fascinating territory. Let's go and look how this land looks out in the Google map <coughs> and here we are looking at the uh, <coughs> this is the Punjab plains, the Ludhiana here, the Ludhiana region, Ludhiana district the British has their cantonment. This is the Ambala here. This is the Ludhiana. This is the Sutles River. You can see Bias River here. British has their cantonment in Sutles and near Patiala, near Chandigarh. There will be Ambala will be somewhere here because this is the Yamuna River. Ambala, Krasya, Haranpur, Ambala, Ludhiana, Firozpur. They were the British cantonment and six violated the Sutles. That was the boundary. This is the Firozpur, the Firozpur cantonment, Ludhiana cantonment and Ambala cantonment. And the war was fought. This is the Sutles River. You can see the beautiful Sutles River, the Rupert Mountains here, Bakra Nangal Gorge. You can see the blue dark area. And <coughs> this is the Bias River, Harike Patan, where this is the beast to do. After the first Sikh war, Jalandar, Pagwara, Hoshiarpur, all these territories became the British East India Company, Bahadur's territory. There was a princely state of Kapurthala, Sultanpur Lodi here, that's a different story. And Sikh gave lot of that other hilly areas to the British. That area is here, this is the river, river Ravi. The Ravi is the symbolic Radcliffe line that we talked about many times. This is the Lahore means on the bank of River Ravi and Amritsar district and Gurdaspur district are on the other side. So because the Patan court here, the Punjab, tip of Punjab, all the territories 
up the river Ravi and you see the river Jhelum here. This is the river Jhelum. Islamabad Rawalpindi. We saw the attack somewhere here. Attack, uh, yeah, Rawalpindi, west of Rawalpindi, there will be an attack. And yeah, somewhere here the attack will be there. <coughs> and this is the Hazara region. See the Indus River. This is the Turbela Dam, right? This is the Nanga Parbat and where the Indus bends and start descending into the Punjab mountainous region. This is the Hazara district that was retained and there was some change to the original TT. And Abbottab, this is the Hazara region, Abbottabad, Haripur, Manshera, Balakot, all these regions. Then we have Anantanag, Srinagar, Baramula. This is the gorge and Muzaffarabad somewhere here. And Chilas and Gilgit later. And the descendants of uh, Maharaja Gulab Singh. Dogra of Jammu, they conquered those areas. It's a very fascinating land, and this is only due to the sagacity and vision of Maharaja Gulab Singh that today we have Jammu and Kashmir. The India has Jammu and Kashmir. This is the Jammu and Kashmir, in a sense, is considered to be the house Maharaja Gulab Singh Dogra. Jamwalia or Jamuraza has built. So again we are doing looking at it in a little bit different fashion. <coughs> then we have Ravi River here. You can very easily see the Ravi River. You have Katwa and Jammu, Katwa district. And <coughs> this is the the Sutlej River, Jolandar. This is the Sutlej River. Ludhiana is across the Sutlej River. Firozpur is across the Sutlej River. And uh, uh, the Ambala was not exactly Sutlej River, but south of Sutlej, we can see Rupnagar will be here. And the Jalandar Dove, the British got in the first Sikh war. Then uh, the territories, this is the Dalhousie Chamba, means this is a Chamba district uh, at the time, princely state. So this is the Ravi River. You can see the Ravi River, Brahmaur here, and Chamba, Chamba town itself is on the Ravi River and Dalhousie, Prince, uh, Dalhousie Hill Station and north of <coughs> Ravi River. So the Ravi River is in the Lahore, the Ghost, the symbolic Radcliffe line. Here you see, you can see that. And this is the uh, Abhutapad, Haripur, all these areas, Hazara, this is the Jhelum River. That was, this is the Jammu and hilly regions and these are the Punjab plains, this is the Siwalix area, this is forested uh, Pir Panjal mountains and uh, we have the Kashmir valley here and uh, <coughs> that is in brief about uh, Treaty of Amritsar signed between the courtier, prominent leader, minister of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the Sheri Punjab, after the first Sikh Anglo war, the, he was awarded because, in view of the services he rendered, again re establishing the amity relations between the belligerents, that is, the Khalsa Sarkar at Lahore and East India Company Bahadur at Fort William, Calcutta, because Gulab Singh played such an important role. That's what the treaty exactly reads. If you go to Wikipedia and start reading it, British, in recognition of the great services Gulab Singh made in making again these contending parties uh, friends, he was rewarded with this and also because he paid the remaining 75 lakh rupees or non-akshahi rupees to the East India Company, which was the legacy of all these hilly areas between River Ravi and River Indus or Jhelum that the Sikhs gave to as a part of indemnity to the East India Company Bahadur and the treaty was signed between the Gulab Singh and three prominent British leaders of East India Company government at that time. Thank you very much. Today that is your articulate president J. Reddy who brought you 
this uh, interesting event, military political event at that time in the Punjab plains and the Pir Panjal region to our audience and hope you will follow my channel and subscribe it and encourage your friends to do it and I will look forward to see you in other presentations soon.